Hi everyone, Simon here from St. Helens Church. Welcome to this very special edition of our Sunday Online. There's going to be lots of different faces featuring today, some older ones and some newer ones, uh, but we're going to begin this special edition with a homegrown song of praise. There is a story older than time. There's a story older than time About a king whose heart is good There is a hero who paid the price And took the path no other could There is a ruler who stoops to serve Reaches out to those in need. There's a redeemer who makes things good, and from our chains we have been free. Majestic. pray together. Father God, thank you for your goodness to us, and we do thank you for the great story of Jesus Christ that has played out through history and that we are privileged to be a part of. Thank you that in spite of all the restrictions currently on our lives, 
that we can still unite together in prayer and praise. So we do ask that you'd speak to us today through all that is said and shared in this online time together. Amen. Well, I did mention that it was a very special edition of our Sunday Online today, and it is very special because it is, of course, Reverend Peter, Ruth, Will, Kate, and Emma Huxtable's last Sunday with us here in Stapleford after 11 years of ministry. So today is going to be a bit of a different feel to our online. We're going to have uh, the usual elements. Peter's going to be giving us a last talk. Julie Higton shortly will be re bring us our reading, and Paul Bidell will be leading us in prayer. But then there will be some very special tributes that we'll share later on in our time together. But before we get to that, we're going to pass over to Julie now, who's going to bring us our reading from Genesis. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham, Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haram. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Thank you very much, Julie, for bringing us our reading there. We're going to have our next song of praise now before Peter shares with us.
You might remember Magnus Magnusson on the old mastermind shows. What Arabic name is given to the Palestinian uprising in Israeli-occupied territory that began in December 1987? Dallas. What is the common name of the wildflower Primula veris? I've started to finish. What is the common name of the wildflower Primula veris, which belongs to the primrose family? Scapus. No, it's the cowslip. Yes, that famous phrase, I've started, so I'll finish. So it's back to nearly the beginning of the Bible for my final sermon. There's plenty to talk about in this episode in the life of Abraham as I make my farewell. Here we find Abraham's family on the move. They set out from their roots in a place called Ur. Now Ur doesn't sound like a very nice place, but by all accounts it was very nice, near the banks of the Euphrates in modern Iraq. They are intending to go to the land of Canaan, and to do that they need to go up and around the desert. When they get to Haran, that's as far as Terra, Abraham's dad, decides to go after all. And the family and their travelling, farming, business community stop there. And then eventually Terra dies. So the next generation establish their life in Haran. And Abraham marries Sarah, no kids sadly, and Abraham heads into old age. Then God intervenes, just like the beep, 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 and the message comes through, I've started, so I'll finish. God had intended Abraham and family to go all the way, not to stop forever in the halfway house of Haran, but to carry on through to Canaan. What started out way back maybe is just a feeling in terror and family to make them move, now turns into a strong call of God with an amazing promise attached. Go to Canaan and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. Wow, we'll come back to that promise at the end. But there is a sense that God is never finished with us. I've started, so I'll finish. He will never stop calling us, and he won't just let us settle. Paul prays in Philippians chapter 1 in the Bible for the church, uh, for the church in Philippi, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. For me, this has meant a journey from my South of England roots to join in God's church in the Midlands, both West and East in my ordained ministry, and in particular to be part of church communities in this Western side of Nottingham in a number of ways over nearly 28 years. So today I feel this call of God to complete the work that he started in me, not to leave it all behind, but to go in deeper, to become still more engaged with life in this region and its challenges and joys. And yes, painfully, that involves leaving Stapleford. It's a place I've always felt very settled in, and we as a family have felt so welcomed and loved and appreciated. I have grown with you all, learning loads on the way, from leading and preaching to doing a building project to learning the video and tech stuff of this past year. I will miss everyone and everything about this place terribly. Kate, Will and Emma have grown up here and enjoyed the friendship and participation here and all the life examples that they have been given. Ruth has loved and has loved the support and friendship of many here and journeyed closely alongside a number of people and families in this past decade. If you haven't yet watched my little uh, six videos, A Last Look Inside the Treasure Trove, please do so, because I've tried to capture in these all that is good about Stapleford Parish and all that I will so miss. Yet, God has called us on. Unlike Abraham, who took everyone with him, we'll be leaving you behind, but we're not going far away, and we do stay in the same deanery, and your prayers and personal links in the time to come will be so valued and welcome. So just while we are in this wonderful moment in the Bible with Abraham, I would love to make three further short points, if I may. First, building on what I've just said, a lot of what is happening here is not just about going, it's about growing. It's about growing as well as going. While some are called to move away from time to time, 
Most of us stay put. Abraham, Abraham could have just settled back into a slow retirement and built his ideal property and let the younger ones get on with everything, like his nephew Lot. God had other ideas. Abraham was old, but he still needed to step out. He had to step up and take on an extra level of responsibility after his father died. We all find that in life, don't we? We have to grow up. We prefer someone else to take on the responsibilities and the decision making. But as we go through different stages of life, we have to embrace change and accept more responsibility. So today, whether like us we are called to go, or for most of us called to stay, the challenge is not to step back but to grow in the calling God has given you, taking on responsibility to serve in the kingdom of God with all your heart and soul. And age isn't a barrier. You could be 75, but wouldn't it be fabulous if you stepped up to help mentor our teenagers at church? You could be 50 plus and suddenly are unable to find work, feeling like you're on the scrap heap, but not so in the kingdom of God. We are all called to grow as Abraham was. Secondly, just remember God's sense of humor in all this. I mean, this whole Abraham story is pretty ridiculous. A 75-year-old man who, together with his wife Sarah, have struggled to have any children, then a promise from God that they will have descendants and that those descendants will turn into a great nation. This is the first of many episodes in the Bible where God delights in choosing the most unlikely people for a particular task. Just think about, in the Bible, Ruth or King David or Mary, the mother of Jesus, or Peter, the rough fisherman, or St. Paul. It's as if God has a quiet chuckle before implementing his plan, knowing, humanly speaking, it's ridiculous, but proceeding nonetheless. I think I felt God's gentle chuckle. The thought of me, this fairly sheltered South of England small town background person that I was, now being called to take on a role as an advisor in urban and estates mission. There is a sense of God's humor about this. I assure you, I won't be laughing, but yet it will make me hold lightly to the role, whack on some great big L plates, and ensure that I depend on God for him to open the doors. There's that old phrase, isn't there? God equips those he has called, not the other way around, which is God calls those already equipped. Well, that should encourage us all to be obedient to God's calling into things that feel well above our pay grade and competency level. We don't shrink back while we wait to get all the skills. Instead, we offer ourselves in the knowledge that he will give us all that we need when we need it, just like he did for Abraham although that turned out to be quite scary at times as well. And when it all seems ridiculous, just remember God's humor in it all and his track record of making the impossible possible. Finally, let's just talk about this amazing, unshakable promise. What does he say to Abraham? I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The bottom line is, we are only here today linking in with the kingdom of God because Abraham responded to this call and promise. Abraham is the origin, the the genesis, if you like, of everything that God has unfolded in this world, It started with Abraham's natural family, developed into a whole nation, Israel, and then that carried on through times when it looked like they would be completely wiped out. There was the restoration after the exile. And then in Jesus, suddenly the promise carried in the physical descendants of Abraham became wide open to the whole world and its peoples through Jesus' death and resurrection and the pouring out of the Spirit. We today are beneficiaries of this promise to Abraham. We stand in the river and flow of God's promises and purpose for us. We become part of the blessing for the nations. Hallelujah. That gives us the confidence and security to know that God holds the future. 
coronavirus, changes in the church here. God can cope with this and he will provide for the church's future and for your future. People here will continue to be equipped, trained and sent. New leaders will be raised up. The churches will once again be filled with the sound of singing and praise. Ridiculous amounts of coffee and cake and quiche will be consumed and shared in fellowship and astonishing and awesome events and get-togethers that bless a wide range of people will take place again. For now, we stand in this promise. Ruth and I and Kate, Will and Emma will grieve at this farewell. It might feel strange for all of you for a time to come, but remember God's plan. I've started, so I'll finish. It's about growing as much as going. There's God's sense of humour and the delight for God to do the impossible. And he's given his unshakable promise for the blessing of the earth. Thank you. God bless. And amen. Thanks, Peter, for everything that you've shared with us there in your last talk as vicar uh, of Stapleford Parish. We're going to respond now in the words of this next song, God, I look to you. And then Paul Bizell will lead us in our prayers. Thanks, Lord. 
we pray as the congregations of St Helens, St Luke's and Montrose Court, that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be a growing, Christ-centred parish church for the people of Stapleford and surrounds, with the intention of leading a new generation into life in God. We pray that even in these strange times when, although we meet online, we may each look for ways in which we can grow the work of our respective churches. We thank you for the time that lockdown has given us, to rest and listen to you, and to begin to acknowledge where you would have us go, and exercise our ministries that you have given us. We thank you that you called Peter and Ruth to come to St Helens 11 years ago, and that they responded positively to that call. We thank you for everything they and the family have given to this church. We know that you continue to call us all our lives to new things, new challenges and new horizons. We pray that you will go ahead to Broxtow and prepare that place for the Huxtable's arrival. In your name, Amen. As the days and weeks progress at the moment, more and more of us are coming to hear about people we know with the virus, people who may be very sick, some who have died, others who've recovered. Now, even as I speak, I know a number of you who have already had the vaccine. We thank you, Lord, for the advancement in medical knowledge that have enabled vaccines to start to be rolled out to so many that we know. We pray for the unenviable job of Boris Johnson, his government and their advisers. We pray for the isolated and the housebound in their vulnerability. For our homes and families, our schools and our young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. We pray for your blessing on our local communities, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, in your healing name. Amen. And in this week of extreme weather across the country, from wind and rain to snow, ice and flooding, we thank you for all our emergency services who have worked tirelessly during the pandemic to bring the high levels of support that we know and appreciate. We pray for them as they respond to emergency calls, that they may be given the strength and the resilience to face each new day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father God, as we say farewell to dear friends and loved ones, we trust the Huxtable family into your care. We pray for happiness and joy to be ahead for each of them, for wisdom and guidance to be beside them, and for grace and truth to be behind them, pushing them onwards into your goodness. We know that you will always love and protect them wherever they go. Peter, Ruth, Kate, Will and Emma, the Lord bless each of you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you all and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In his most precious name. Amen. Well, thank you, Paul, for leading us in those wonderful prayers. And we have a very special treat now. Uh, we have someone that will look very familiar to a lot of you. He looks an awful lot like a puppet, and I think his name may be Grandad. But there have been many people pass through our doors, and in uh, Peter's time, particularly over the 11 years that he and Ruth and Will, Kate and Emma have been here, uh, and here's just a few people that would like to say a few things. So enjoy this next tribute that has been put together to say thank you to the Huxtable family. Well, here I am at St Huxtable's Church, Stapleford, as we say au revoir to a very special family. Who is it? Oh yes, Peter, 
Ruth, Kate, Will and Emma. There's been a lot of people through these doors over the last 11 years. We've had a few curries in our time. Oh, sorry. I mean, we've had a few curates in our time. Students, people from overseas and even a few angels. Here's just a few of them. Peter, Ruth, Katie, Will, Emma and Clumber. What a privilege it, to be asked to say a few words before you leave for Fields Anew after so many successful years in Stapleford. How exciting and how well deserved. You have achieved so much during this time, Peter. I can never, ever thank you enough for being with me every step of the way during my time as church warden. Without your loving and patient help, I would have struggled. Whether it was church, messy church, or privately. I can thank you so much for all that you did. And I like to think that during that time, I grew in my faith. I wish you all love, hope, and prayers on your new, in your new home and in your work. God bless you all. Hi, Peter and Ruth. We wanted to take an opportunity to say a big thank you to you both for our time at St Helens. As a family, we so quickly felt at home and part of the church family, and that was a great experience for us. We want to say thank you to you for the opportunities that we had to develop our ministry in so many different ways as we learn from you and from others and we experience life in Stapleford. Matt. Uh, and thank you especially for the opportunity to be church warden for that year. It wasn't something I ever thought um, I would have the chance to do and almost certainly I'll never get the chance to do it again. Um, we will look back um, on our time in Stapleford with joy. We've made some lifelong friends. And so we thank you and we pray and know that God will use you and bless you as you move to Broxley. Hello Peter, Ruth, Kate, Will and Emma. It's been such a privilege to know you all, to work with you, to sing with you and to worship with you when we were in Stapleford. Your thoughtful companionship and guidance have been most valuable. Thank you for your love and fellowship. We'll cherish those memories forever. Messy church and school assemblies were great fun. Thank you for all the memorable playtimes with the Golden Nugget, the Tooth Fairy game and the Bird Whistle. Thank you for baptising me. As we embark on a new chapter in your ministry, we pray for God's guidance and inspiration. We also pray for the St. Helens congregation as you continue in worship and service to the community and gear up for a time of transition. Bye! Hi Peter Happy and Ruth <laughs> and Kate and Emma of course. Um, just wanted to say um, we're praying for you all as you start this new adventure. I'm sure you're going to be a huge blessing. And thank you so much for the support and the love and the encouragement and all we learned from you guys in the few years we spent at St. Helens. And, um, you know, thank you for putting me up for me, setting my hair on fire, increasing your services <laughs> and making a mess with young people constantly. Um, you were such a blessing to our lives. Um, and I'm sure you will be to so many more. So yeah. thank you and all the best. Yeah, thank you very much. The Vicar, the incredible Peter Huxtable, the Vicar at St. Helens, they say, taking his sermons and prayers in his own special way. A musical man singing when he can, and dab hand with the guitar too. Playing the organ, he can sing the hymns to me and you. It makes the congregation happy and not blue. A musical family he brings, with Kate and Emma who sing, and Will who plays musical things. Ruth, his wife, 
who has a kind heart, looks after the children and sometimes as old people. The vicar's a bit of a mover when dancing with the kids to our God is a great big God, reaching up high and down low and out to the side. What a way to go! The best thing about our vicar, he tells us about God to those who've just found him and those who've known him a lot. He questions the Bible, which helps us a lot to understand this man they call God. Rev Peter Huxtable, what a wonderful man. God chose you because you are the man. Hello, Peter and Ruth. God bless. Hello. Congratulations on the new post and the new role. And we send our love and prayers. Thank you so much for all that you've done and for your prayer and encouragement during my curacy, which was inflicted on me a few years ago now. And I'm grateful to everyone there for a great experience. And uh, I just hope and pray that uh, all goes well for you as you make the move. And uh, if you do change your mind, just remember that this could all be yours. <laughs> God bless and bye-bye from us. Bye, thank you. Hi Peter, thank you for everything you've done for me. Good luck for the future, all the best, take care, bye-bye. Oh, 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 thank you for the things you gave. Thank you for some truly iconic songs. For all the encouragement. Messy moments. Easter sunrise services. Special musical times. Thoughtful sermons. Chances to think about how faith connects to life. And all the times that you strode up and down the aisle. Peter, we're thinking of you particularly as you finish in your current role in Stableford Parish and as you take on a new responsibility. We're praying also, of course, for Ruth, Kate, Will, Emma and Clumber with all the changes that lie ahead and wish you well. God bless. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. So, Peter, family Huxtable, you're moving on. End of an era. Um, we came to Stanford shortly after, shortly after you'd arrived. Uh, we didn't know anyone at all. And uh, I think from day one, uh, you took us under your wing, uh, you nurtured us, opportunities uh, for us to be involved in music, a talent cook, um, <laughs> to get involved with some uh, crazy young people, and uh, to nurture us. Um, certainly without you, um, I think developing my, my sense of calling would have been uh, a lot harder. And uh, for us as a family, just having friends has been fantastic at that time in there's six years for us in, in Stoke would be a time that we, well, we do, we look back with fondness and, 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 and gratitude, and that is in no small part uh, to the blessing that you, Peter, and as a family uh, have been to us. Yeah, uh, thank you really for being such good friends to us from the very first time we saw you. You came into our house when I think we didn't have very much furniture um, with cake and stuff. Um, you've been great um, just supporting the girls and just helping them to grow as Christians and in their faith and um, obviously you've been my boss as well Peter so thank you for that, that was a great time too um, and um, we're just sending you loads and loads of love for your future ministry and um, you know you have our prayers always um, and uh, as we have been doing we'll obviously keep in touch but um, good luck God bless. lots of love bye bye Hi, Peter and Ruth and Kate, Will and Emma and Clumber and everyone in Stapleford at St Helens and St Luke's. We just want to say a huge thank you to you for all that you taught us about ministry and mission and community while we were with you in that amazing time a few years ago. And thank you so much for your friendship and yeah, for all that you taught us and in all the ways in which you inspired us. And thank you for the music. Oh, 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 oh. It's an adventure, adventure of faith. <laughs> Peter and Ruth and all your children, we were very happy and honored to be part of your flock for three and a half years. And we wish you every blessing where you go. We know you're going to bless others as well. And, uh, well, goodbye and we, we love, love you. Love you. Goodbye, goodbye. Hi, Hi Mr. Mr. Bones. Bones. We enjoy
enjoyed our time with you in Stapleford so, so much. And we learnt lots too. We are so grateful that God called us to be a part of your team. We wish you all the best for your new adventure. And pray you will know God with you in all you do. Bye! Bye! Bye. See you soon! Hi Pete and Ruth. Um, to think back all those years uh, to when we were studying together at St John's, um, uh, the two of us young couples and with young children, it's, it is wonderful to have known you for such a long time because you're both really special people. Um, it's also, a, obviously for this special occasion, uh, a privilege to have had you as the couple who were responsible for ministering to us. Uh, you, you're both wonderful. And Pete, as a vicar, you, I have to say, were fantastic. In fact, are fantastic. You have such integrity. You have such uh, a strong belief in God's word. And you so delight in worship that it was really easy to sit under your ministry. Over to you. Um, just to say that we, we thank God for your faithfulness to to him and to his calling and we wish you every blessing in your next adventure and um, God is with you and uh, uh, you're going to be great so lots of love from us both to all of you as a family God bless Hi Peter we want to thank you for your music for your energy and enthusiasm for taking our church forward and especially outward Hi Peter, obviously we're all very sad that you're leaving. On a personal note, I would very much like to thank you for the support you showed me when I lost Sandra. And also, I'm also very disappointed you won't be here to do my up and coming wedding, of course. But all the best for the future. Hi Peter, um, thank you for your leading in music and the worship and all your teaching as well. I wish you all the best for the future. Hi Peter, so many memories. But I think the one that sticks in my mind is Messy Church. Cakes, mess, noise, kids. Loved it. Thank you, Peter. Bye. Hi, Peter. I want to say thank you for all your help and support for my six years at St Luke's and also being part of this um, home group, which has been really good for me to be part of that and not have to lead it. I want to ask God to continue to bless you in, in your um, new ministry ahead. Amen. Peter, Ruth, Kate, Emma and Will, thank you for everything you've done and may God bless you in the years ahead. Peter, Ruth, Will, Kate and Emma, memories of you, memories of Peter being so supportive for time travelling and yet not running, not coming in to run it. Thank you. We very much enjoyed Peter. Special times with Peter on a Monday morning when we used to get together for prayer, a small group of us, and we were able to support Peter in some special bits of ministry that he had to do when he was called out at that time. And the other thing that was great about him that I especially remember is the support he gave to the Wednesday morning service, which is so important to those who go to it. It's their only church, and he was so supportive of that in organising it and being part of it. Thank you, Peter. It's been great knowing you. Lots of memories beyond that, of course. Great ones of your ministry. Bless you. Peter and Ruth, just Hi. wishing you well from the West Country. I uh, hope that the whole move goes well. And just want to say thank you again for the time we had with you. It was a great experience. Learned so much from you. Uh, I'm just really glad. And we're feeding off it still and implementing some of the things we learned up at Stapleford, where we are down here. I particularly loved Messy Church and that was some of the stuff we, we did there and learned there. We've, we've really made good use of elsewhere. Um, it's been really, really helpful. Um, there were lots of children at the church who led in his curacy and um, we, we brought all sorts of ideas from Nottingham to there that uh, were really good. But, uh, but no, thank you to, to both of you for uh, everything while we were in Nottingham. Wait, hold it there. We'll come back to those two in a minute. Our time's almost up, so I'd just like to say a few words myself. There's an old puppet saying, 
You don't get anywhere in life without someone pulling a few strings or giving you a hand up. And let me tell you, when someone gives you a hand up, it's hard not to feel a very personal connection with them. So, thank you for the music. I'm not going to sing ABBA. How about this? You write the songs that make the whole church sing. You write the songs of love and special things. Oh, you're just like a Christian Barry Manilow. <laughs> just joking. You're not as good as Barry Manilow. Anyway, thanks for the wisdom, the fun and the laughter. And thank you for encouraging us to speak. Even though that's a very risky thing to do. So, as is tradition, we'll finish in a moment with a blessing. But after that, do join us in the hall or anywhere else for a drink, a bite to eat and a chat. Goodbye. So as you go on your way to new pastures, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. 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 A huge, huge thank you to everyone that contributed to that amazing video. And very big thank you, of course, to Grandad Puppet for hosting it. And indeed to Al Kirkland, who I know is very supportive of Grandad Puppet and putting that together. But Peter, Ruth, Kate, Will and Emma, thank you for the last 11 years of ministry here in Stapleford. We're going to have now our final song, Be Thou My Vision. Smile.
thank you very much everyone for joining in with this online time together. I'm going to pass over to Peter now for a final blessing. And so to close with, let me share God's blessing with you. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The wisdom of the Lord Jesus guide your path. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, be upon your homes, be with you in your coming in and your going out. May God bless, preserve and keep you. May the Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace that you may please him both in body and soul and living together with God's people in faith and love, you may receive the blessings of eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen.